Politics on Jewish Week TV. I'm here with none other than the Governor of the Empire State, the Honorable David Patterson. Thank you so much for, for being with us. Adam, it's great to join you again. Thank you. Um, you have a couple weeks left in office. Tell me what some of your priorities are as you leave office that you want to take care of before you go. Well, uh, pack up the Executive Mansion. I'll start with that. And, you know, a number of transition issues. And also trying to uh, not deflect many things to the next governor, Andrew Cuomo, who does not deserve the additional deficit that the legislature couldn't close, uh, which arose out of the 2010-2011 budget. So I am um, very, uh, we're looking also at some uh, pardons based on immigration status, and maybe even some pardons based on what seems to be an outstanding sense of recognizing one's debt to society that some people may have taken. So looking back on, on your tenure, tell me some of the highlights. I think the highlights were our ability to address issues that had been laying dormant in Albany for years. For instance, there had been talk about establishing a new pension system because right now, as we're hearing more and more, uh, bloated pensions uh, are creating problems for governments. We at Tier 5, which is a new pension system, and this had been talked about for over a quarter of a century, we were able to achieve it while I was here. Um, we also stopped the idea of padding pensions at the end of someone's uh, term, which creates problems for taxpayers in the future. After 35 years, we eradicated the Rockefeller drug laws, which were 30% um, more stringent than any other state in the country. I'm sure you've been asked this a lot as you leave office. Looking back, uh, regrets, if there's one thing that you could take back to differently, what would it be? Uh, one thing I would take back was the fact that when I became governor, I had to pass a budget within two weeks. And I think I got into the mentality of living crisis to crisis, which is not a good way to govern. And I never really assembled my team. Thank you. I think what a lot of people might be wondering regarding some of the more controversial aspects of your tenure, uh, regarding decisions that you uh, made uh, regarding the Yankee tickets, the investigation of your friend, uh, how could those decisions not have, you not have anticipated the impact it would have on your administration and on your political career? Well, um, I uh, consulted um, my uh, counsel for uh, you know, the, the decision resolving tickets, and if we're wrong, we'll, we'll pay the fine. Um, on the other issue, I did absolutely nothing wrong, and that's what the K Commission said. So uh, it's not that I have any regrets because there wasn't anything I did. Other than this, for over two and a half weeks, I um, <clears throat> was the object of rumors, innuendo, and outright lies, written in the newspaper, unsourced articles, sometimes front page articles, speculating on what would be the outrageous story that the New York Times was going to print to uh, put me out of office, culminating in three calls made to media outlets at the kickoff of the Super Bowl when I guess uh, whoever did this thought that we would be um, asleep, suggesting that I would be resigning uh, in a Spitzer-like scandal, they described it, the next day. and. Um, there was no such situation. And what I think I learned is rather than running after and putting out fires all over the place, what I should have done was just lured the story right to me. I should have just gone ahead and held a press conference, which would have been in this room, and let the national media come and then say to them, if you came here to, just, to uh, cover resignation, you reached the wrong office. But the reason you're here is because you're listening to unsourced rumors and lies, but I don't want you to waste the trip, so let me announce that I'm running for office, and that will be the press conference. Um, even though uh, media investigators have come out with some reports recently that demonstrate what actually happened, you haven't heard an apology from anyone. Um, so you're not gonna hear an apology from me for saying that their conduct was shameful. Well, in terms of your conduct in the, uh, in the investigation, of your friend, uh, you have no regrets about that. I mean, arguably, that's the reason why you decided not to run for re-election. 
No, the reason I decided not to run for re-election is I knew it would take me time to clear my name, but uh, the investigation didn't say there was insufficient evidence. They said there was no evidence of wrongdoing by the government. And uh, so if, there's an, if I had to do over again, I would have done it every day. I'd pick up the, uh, whenever this comes up, someone says that I called the domestic violence victim. I did not. And the, um, uh, the investigation proved that. Uh, looking at the painful budget cuts that you've had to make, uh, you, you veto the legislative spending uh, for the entire legislature for the member item grants. Uh, yet the Daily News came out with today uh, these $17 million of your own, uh, what they call pork barrel, barrel spending. How do you justify that? Well, I offered the legislature the opportunity for those uh, uh, programs that go back to the same period that I may have vetoed when we tried to put them out to come back and uh, that I would release them because we are in very hard times and economic hardship. And um, these are mostly community-based organizations, soup kitchens, uh, people that help the need. And unfortunately, here again, um, it is fashionable to criticize them all, like someone's relatives work at these uh, organizations. They don't do good work. Even when I vetoed them, I admitted that when I looked at because I looked at each one before I vetoed it, 6,709 times I had to solve my name, but I noticed that 95% of them clearly were doing good work. Now, there are some bad apples in the bunch, and when they're there, they should be out. But for the money that I uh, released, this was uh, money that I had appropriated in 2008 before even I knew there was a financial crisis and committed to it. I held it because I didn't want to be releasing it when I was trying to get the legislature to um, uh, to cut spending. This money um, does not go back to the state, state treasury if it's spent. It sits there until someone spends it. That's the law. And five million of those dollars went for the bringing the Super Bowl to the Meadowlands, which is going to leverage five hundred million dollars for the region. So um, I don't know how anybody could consider that to be pork barrel spending. Somebody wrote, oh, he spent money in New Jersey. Now I'm spending money uh, as I announced publicly, along with the NFL and the governor of New Jersey, I'm spending money to bring an economic boondoggle to the region when the Super Bowl is played in the Meadowlands in 2000. Uh, uh, at the same time, the state's kosher food inspection unit is being pretty much shut down. All these uh, inspectors have been laid off. Uh, there's pretty much no enforcement left in the state. A 105-year-old uh, service ensuring that people, uh, when they see something advertises kosher, that it will be kosher. Uh, the new state requirement is that they display what their standard of, of being kosher is. Now no one will make sure they're adhering to that. Uh, are you concerned about that? I am. I think that um, in addition to kosher food inspections, our uh, environmental protection inspections are, um, have dwindled the staff that do that, uh, the state liquor authority, the health codes. Um, we're in a recession. I'm not going to make any bones about it. I hate having done that. But it's gotten to the point where we've depleted all of our reserve sources to um, reduce the deficit, and we had to go now in some areas where we just didn't want to go. And, and, and I apologize to, to everyone for the fact that we, we've had to, to make that decision. Any sense of where Governor, Governor-elect Cuomo stands on this and whether he'll be able to find some funding in the next budget? Well, Governor, uh, Andrew Cuomo is probably looking at a $10 billion deficit and has less resources to draw from than I did. So regrettably, my prediction is that the belt tightening will even be more severe. And I will speak for Governor Andrew Cuomo, who has a, a heart and cares about people, is passionate about a lot of issues, but is about to be put in as difficult a position as any governor in this country will face over the next few years as he tries to lead us out of this recession and back to prosperity.